Hi guys, I just wanted to do a little video because I'm super duper excited about something and it's just so cool and awesome and it's like kind of packaged in this sort of big important idea. Okay, so the first, the like the main thing that I'm super excited about is that I I am in a book and it's just a little tiny thing that I'm in but I am in this book and I'm gonna get to this book in a minute but I wanted to introduce you to if you don't know the author of this book is Danielle Krissa and Danielle is more widely known as the jealous curator and she has a blog okay that's her blog the jealous curator and um, she has had this blog for I don't know how many years. And what she does is, oh man, I can't do it. Um, she started the blog out as someone who was kind of like a struggling artist. She was um, working as a graphic designer and she was seeing all this really, really cool art. And she was so jealous of all this wonderful art that everybody was making. And I can't remember what her turning point was, but she decided to turn all this sort of like oh, rage and jealousy that all these other people are doing all this awesome art. And she decided to turn it into admiration. So that's why she calls her blog The Jealous Curator. And she's been featuring artists on her blog, I believe every day for quite a few years now. She also has a podcast called Art for Your Ear. And um, I listen to podcasts all the time. If you like podcasts and you're into art at all, or you're just sort of interested in the process of art, or how do people get ideas? Like how is an artist even become an artist? Listen to this podcast. I'm telling you, it's so, so, so inspirational. I have found so many cool artists just by following Danielle on her Instagram, The Jealous Curator, and listening to her podcast, Art for Your Ear. Um, she also happens to be a really cool person. Um, I've emailed her a couple of times just with, um, I had a question a while ago in regards to a fundraiser, and she was like super, super cool. Um, got back to me right away and ended up reading um, a couple of uh, blog posts that I wrote about my brother and was just super, super kind and just a wonderful human being. And I, like I said, I found a lot of artists that I follow through her. Also one of my favorite podcasts I follow because she interviewed um, him on her podcast. So it's like this really cool sort of filter where you know, things come into her world and she puts them out and shares them into your world. So she's also written quite a few books. She's a collage artist and I think her first book is collage and her second book was Artist Block. Her third book, which is one I actually have one here, is called Your Inner Critic is a Big Jerk, which is super, super true. And this is a really good thing to read if you are actually anybody because we all have an inner critic who sits on our shoulder and goes what do you think you're doing do you think anybody is ever gonna want to look at that do you think anybody's ever gonna want to pay for that oh my god you're such an idiot you know throw that stuff away and just you know go watch TV or something that's your inner critic and we all have that and in this book, which is illustrated by Martha Rich, who's an awesome painter, she tells you, you know, why your inner critic is such a big jerk, why you have these thoughts that you're having, and how to sort of shut down that negative voice and make it a positive voice. A couple of years ago, she came out with this book, which is a really, really cool idea. And it's called A Big Important Art Book now with women and so why is it and this is about just under 300 pages why is this important i will tell you why this is important 
I have an art degree. I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts from ASU. Um, I'm a certified art teacher. I took tons of art history classes and the ratio of male artists that you study to female artists that you study. I mean, unless you take an actual feminine art history class, you really don't get to know a lot about any women who created art because they just weren't cataloged at the time because, you know, women weren't as important as men. All right, so here's an art history book. If you've ever taken Art History 101, this is one of your art history books. It's over a thousand pages. This is another one. This is probably the more common one that you'll see in your art history classes. And I had an amazing art history teacher who is very much a feminist. I learned a ton in my art history classes and I actually love, love, love my art history classes. I learned more about world history in my art history classes than I did in any of my straight up history classes. You know, you've got over 2,000 pages of art history here and like minimal artwork featured by women. So that's just a little sliver of why this book is important. So, and what she does is she highlights and talks about women who are actual current living artists. Here's one, Sarah G. Miller. I don't know if it's G or G, but look at this awesome artwork that she makes. And this is all hand painted. This looks like something that you would like spin something around and take a picture of it while it's blurry. This is all painted by hand. It's amazing. This artist is incredible. Susanna Bauer. She takes leaves, dried leaves, and sews them. She sews them and then look at this one. She makes lace inside the leaf and around the leaf. I mean, if that's not art, I don't know what is. There's sculptors in here, there's painters, there's, look, ceramist Molly Hatch. She's amazing. These are all ceramic plates hanging on a wall to make one image. Look at that. Incredible. If you've ever taken a ceramics class or pottery, I mean, this looks like it would be simple, but try it. It's not simple. Craft. Craft. I wanted to show you this because she talks about the idea that um, craft is usually sort of like downplayed and it's kind of like poo-pooed, like that's not art, it's just crafts. Well, a lot of art comes from craft. We make things with our hands. I come from a long line of women who made things with their hands and figured out how to make things out of, you know, whatever they had around the house that they needed to make and that was useful, but they also made it beautiful and lovingly. Um, craft, maybe in some circles, isn't considered fine art, but it is a doorway to fine art. It's something that teaches you how to create, how to problem solve, how to be a creative thinker. Do not downplay craft. And if craft is your thing, freaking get into it, love it, enjoy it. And don't let anybody tell you that it's not good. Um, let's see, who else did I want to show? Look at this one. This is a Korean artist and she makes these resin bracelets with the printing, three-dimensional printing on the inside. And then when the wearer wears the bracelet, the poetry is imprinted on their arm. I mean, how, how do you even come up with that? That's amazing to me. There's so many good artists, so many things to highlight. And the, the things that people are doing, I really wanted to show this because she highlights in every chapter, there's a current living artist. And then she also highlights uh, a woman of art history and Beatrix Potter I mean come on why is Beatrix Potter just because she illustrated children's books why is she not in this book why I ask you I love her artwork 
Tell me somebody who hates Beatrix Potter. They're just an evil person. Because Beatrix Potter is awesome. Look at this. Janet Eckelman. I was reading this and I was like, oh my God, that looks really familiar. Look at these sculptures that she makes. These are installations in cities all around the world. And I was like, I've seen this before. Yeah, you know where I've seen it? In my own city, she's got one installed in downtown Phoenix. It's amazing. If you drive in downtown Phoenix at night, you see this thing floating above in the sky and you're like, what the heck is that? It's a piece of art made by a woman. Thank you very much. Oh, I feel like I'm getting on a soapbox here, but I'm sorry, I'm not sorry. Okay, and then I love, love, love this photographer, Stephanie Bovis. And I heard about her through Danielle's podcast, Art For Your Ear. She just does, look at these pictures that she does. These amazing sort of retro feminist, just the lighting and the color. Just so, so awesome. Look at these. They're so 70s, aren't they? Okay, so that's a big important art book, Now With Women. And then the one that she just released, A Big Important Artist, A Womanual. So it's taking the big important art book to the next step, and this is a workbook. So if you are the type of person who is sort of art curious, I would highly suggest not only reading The Jealous Curator and listening to Art for Your Ear because they are both doorways into a whole nother world, and the, there's a ton of other podcasts to listen to. If you've read or listened to me at all, I always talk about Creative Pep Talk by Andy J. Pizza. There's one called I Like Your Work by Rachel Hess. There's Art and Cocktails by Katerina Popova. There are so many, so many good art and creative podcasts. There's the 529 podcast, which is really, really good. It's out of Australia and it's very photography and design oriented. Okay, so this book is a little workbook. So she's got areas in it where she highlights artists. Take a look. CJ Hundry is an, I believe she's Australian. Those, these look like big paint blobs on the wall behind her. She drew those with colored pencil. She's like insanely unbelievable, realistic drawing. It's incredible. I can't even, can't even. CJ Hendry, Lisa Condon, who actually Lisa Condon is how I found out about Danielle Krissa, because a friend of mine referred me to Lisa Condon's art and I was looking at her blog and Danielle had interviewed Lisa and that's how I found the Jealous Curator. Let's see, who else does she have in here? Oh, another person who lives in my area, Saskia. I'm not sure if that's Jorda or Yorda. Um, but look at these amazing, this woodwork with these topographical, and she's a teacher at a college right around the corner from me. Unbelievable. I think I'll probably try and go take classes from her or something. Really, really cool art. And how about this? I mean, how unbelievable is this? Ashley freaking Longshore? Are you kidding me? If you haven't followed or seen or heard about Ashley Longshore, I'm telling you, she is a force. She is gonna be, she is exploding right now. She's so prolific. Her artwork is just like so good. It's like, it's scary. And she, she makes, I mean, she can probably make like three paintings in a day. I wish I could paint that fast. Her, uh, but I just love her attitude, her support for other artists. She's like crazy. She's starting a foundation 
and she's gonna start giving out art scholarships. And she's just like crazy, crazy good. If you're ever in New York City, go to Bergdorf's and go to her. She's got a little cafe in the ground floor of Bergdorf's with her art all around you and it's insane, it's so awesome. But here's the part I'm most excited about. Page 56 is one of the projects, project number 14, finish a tweet. And that's me right there. That's a tweet that I wrote in response to another writer who was asking a question about his work. And I said, does the unicorn start out with a head? <laughs> And I love unicorns. Unicorns are awesome. I did a painting of a unicorn and started a story about a unicorn. Anyways, and when Danielle was getting ready to write this book, she emailed me and said, you know, where did this quote even come from? And I explained it to her. And she's like, do you mind if I use it in my next book? And I'm like, of course not. And I honestly just told myself, okay, don't even think about it after that because just from kind of dipping my toe in the writing world I know that stuff gets edited out all the time and I was like you know I t even if it is in the book you know it's a tweet whatever big deal but oh my god I have to tell you I got this book in the mail yesterday and I had just finished painting my living room after like two and a half days of working on this painting these walls and getting the right color and I was like just a mess. I had stuff all over the house. I got my mail and of course my dumb mail carrier person shoved it in my mailbox. It was bent and I'm like okay you know it's probably not in there. I'm not gonna it's not gonna be a big deal if it's not in there. I wasn't gonna let myself get down but honestly I've had a couple of recent sort of like bummer moments with my art in the past couple of months and I was kind of like kind of crapped out a little bit and um, when I got this in the mail I was like okay it's not gonna be in there it's not gonna be in there it's not gonna be a big deal no big deal whatever and I opened it up and I was like I don't know I just felt like a movie star and it's like the dumbest thing ever but I'm just so inspired I love the fact that there are artists out there supporting other artists and that they are trying to get this out in the world. I mean, art in and of itself, I mean, with everything that goes on in the world, in the universe, I mean, you think, art, you know, why is art important? I'm gonna tell you, art is important because it is the way we express ourselves, whether it's visual art, whether it's music, poetry, writing, fiction, science fiction, movies, television, whatever it is. Imagine your world without any art. Our world would not exist without art. Every time you look at your phone, there's art involved, there's design, there's creation, there's content creation, there's writing, there's visual imagery, there's illustration, there's music. Imagine driving down the road and not, not seeing any signs, not hearing any music. Your phone would just be like a, what is that? Um, just the, the ones and the zeros, what's that called? I can't remember what it's called. But I mean, our world would be so boring without art. We wouldn't be human. We would just be these like gray blobs, just like, we'd be like amoebas. That what we, that's what we would be. Our world without art, we would just be like these blobs, like going through the world and not even caring about anything. So that's why art is important. I mean, in the big scheme of things, you know, if you're trying to pay your bills and you know, you've got daycare and groceries to buy and, you know, whatever. You're not going to, like, spend $300 on a painting to hang on your wall. But you might look at your phone. You might look at Instagram and you might see something that makes you smile. What about comics, cartoons, 
anything like that. You know, it's how we connect with each other. And it just makes me so, so happy that these people are out there in the world creating things so that we can look at them, so that we can interact with them, touch them, and have conversations and go, what were they thinking? What happened? Like, what pushed them down this path? What, what inspired them to make that painting or, you know, mold that sculpture or that clay or, you know, carve that wood or whatever it was? Like, and then when you find out these stories about these people, there's always something that you can relate to. Something. Even if the art is art that you're like, hmm, whatever, there's something in their story, I guarantee you, that might have a connection to you or to somebody that you know or something that you can relate to. It's human. We're all human. Anyways, if you're interested in art at all, if you're if you if you go to Michaels and buy pencil kits and you don't know what to do with them, and you have art supplies in your house and you're like I love art, I like making art, but I don't know what I'm doing. Or if you just like making crafts, if you go to the store and you buy, you know, pumpkins and put ribbons and stuff all over your pumpkins, or you're like the master pumpkin carver in your house, or maybe you're really good at hanging wallpaper, or whatever it is, there's art involved. And there's a, there's a path for you to follow, and there's someone out there who can share their story and their information with you that will enrich your experience. And then what you can do is pass that on to somebody else that you know, maybe somebody younger, maybe you know a kid who's interested in learning how to, my dad makes model airplanes and he's 77 years old, I think, 77 years old. And he and my stepmom signed up for a little big brothers and big sisters. And he's got a little brother that he's teaching how to make model airplanes. I mean, to me, that's like the most amazing thing. Share it with somebody that you know or ask somebody that you know to share it with you. Pass it on, you know. Anyways, enjoy yourselves, make some art, buy some books, <laughs> look at some art, take classes, and um, just encourage each other. All right. Thank you so much, and thanks, Danielle. This is really, really amazing, and I love this book. I can't wait. I'm gonna make my first project is gonna be Project 16, which is change a tchotchke. So you go to Goodwill or a thrift store or somewhere, and you buy a little ceramic tchotchke, and you change it somehow, right? You do whatever it is you wanna to do to this tchotchke. You smash it and put it back together, or you paint it, or you glue it on something, or whatever. And then the next project, Project 17, is you write a little note and then you leave it out in public as a free gift for somebody. I love that idea. That's what I'm going to do. So, thanks. Have a great day. And I'm sorry this is so long. All right, bye.